Hi, and welcome back to the Calculus of Explanations, and the second video in our Circle Inversion series. If you haven't watched the first video, I highly recommend that you go back and do that. If you just want to enjoy part two, here's what you need to know. Circle Inversion is a transformation that takes circles to other circles. Like this. Unless the circle goes through the origin of the inversion circle, in which case it becomes a line. There's one more thing you need to know, which is the formula for how to invert a point. We went over this in the first video, and it does involve some trigonometry. However, we're left with quite a simple formula on how to invert a point A to a point A dash. The distances of the two points from the origin, when multiplied together, give the radius of the circle squared. Now, let's jump into a problem. I got this problem from The Art of Problem Solving. See the link below. And I think it's a really powerful demonstration of this technique. Consider this semicircle with these semicircles inside it. Our job is to find the radius, r, of this circle centered at p. Normally one would do this by drawing these blue lines, and the art of problem solving has a bunch of suggested methods. However, all of these methods require trigonometry. What if trigonometry was banned? What if we couldn't use it? Could we still solve this problem? Well, we're not here to learn trigonometry. We're here to learn circle inversion. And I have a couple methods to show you one of my own invention, and one from the art of problem solving. They also mentioned Descartes' theorem, or the Kissing theorem, which one Nobel laureate in chemistry was so fond of that he wrote this poem about it. Four circles to the kissing come, the smaller are the benter. The bend is just the inverse of the distance from the center. Though their intrigue left Euclid dumb, there's now no need for rule of thumb. Since zero bends a dead straight line, and concave bends have minus sign, the sum of the squares of all four bends is half the square of their sum. Let's unpack this a little bit. We have four mutually tangent circles all touching each other with these curvatures, which is just the inverse of their radius. Note that the larger circle is given a negative curvature because it is concave or exterior to the other three circles. If we plug these values for the curvatures into the equation suggested by the poem, we should find that the radius r is six on seven. We'll now show this using circle inversion. As usual, the first decision is which circle to invert on. Here we're going to choose the outermost semicircle, which I've highlighted green. The diameter inverts to this red line. And we're going to look at this point C, which lies on the circles centered at A and B. Using the fact that the radius of the circle of inversion is 3, we can figure out this point inverts to a distance of 9 away from the origin. Since they both touch C, the two semicircles when inverted, must touch C dash. The circle we're interested in is tangent to all three other circles, and is therefore tangent to all three in the inverted space. Since we want to know the radius of this circle, we can say that twice that radius is equal to 3 minus the distance to this point, Q. But how do we find that distance? Well, this is where the inversion comes in handy. Q inverts to this point, Q dash. So we really just need to find the diameter of this red circle, D. We could do that using trigonometry, but of course, trigonometry is banned. So what are we gonna do? Well, you guessed it. It's time for a double inversion. We choose the largest circle as the circle of inversion and invert these two semicircles, noting that they go through the origin and so become straight lines. Again, the circle we're interested in is nestled between all three other circles 
and this must stay the same in the inverted space. We invert this point M to M dash, noting that M dash is one and a half circle diameters away from the origin. Reusing the formula of inversion, now with R equal to six, gives us that M is two away from the origin. Six minus two is four, so the diameter of the circle is four. Zooming back into the original problem will show us that because D is four, Q dash is a distance of seven away from the origin. Using the formula of inversion one last time tells us that the distance to the point Q is therefore nine divided by seven. Plugging this into our formula for the radius gives us 2R is equal to 12 on seven or R is equal to six on seven, exactly what we saw before. Let's look at the alternative approach shown by the Art of Problem Solving link. Instead of using the largest circle to invert on, this approach formulates a new circle centered at this point O. The nice thing about this is the largest circle and the circle centered at A both go through the origin and therefore invert to straight lines. The circle centered at B and the circle centered at P must both lie between these straight lines and thus have the same size. See if you can finish the problem from here or check out the link in the description below. The study of circle inversion can lead us down a lot of interesting paths. For example, we could ask, what happens if we iterate circle inversion? Well, we can end up with some pretty crazy fractals. See the link in the description below for more of these awesome animations. Or we could talk about inversion in 3D using a sphere. What would that look like? This might lead us to ask about inversion in even higher dimensions. You might also be inspired to study transformations more generally and go down the path of complex analysis. In studying complex analysis, you might find that circle inversion is just the map from Z to one over Z in the complex plane. This generalizes to something called Mobius transformations. All of the transformations that you're seeing from this clip, see the description for details, can be represented as one of these Mobius transformations and simply relate to the movement of the sphere in three dimensions. Let me know if there's anything in particular you'd want to see in a third circle inversion video. In general, I have lots of ideas for different video topics to cover on the channel. Please let me know if any of these interest you or if there's anything else you'd like to see. Thanks as well for your many positive comments on the first video. If you like this content, please consider subscribing. And if you'd like to support me making more of these, consider supporting me on Patreon. Thank you very much for watching and stay curious.